Korean Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hi, this is Arlene and you are listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. So today we are going to talk about Smart Green City. It will be a forum held in Langkawi and we will be talking to the organizers of the forum. With me is Tengku Faizwa Tengku Razif, president of My Friend, Young Female Entrepreneur Network, as well as Ashwin. He is the program manager for Lintas 2015. So welcome to the studio. And thank you, Arlene. Yeah, pleasure to have been called. First of all, I think the most important question is, why organize this Langkawi Smart Green City Forum? Okay, um, first of all, um, our NGO actually uh, focuses on encouraging more uh, young females to become entrepreneurs. Mm. But at the same time, we also believe in organizing activities that is eco-friendly and uh, something that goes along the lines of making people responsible towards developing the nation and also any part of the world that they might be in. So one of the uh, aims that uh, my friend, the Malaysian Young Female Entrepreneurs Network, has been uh, delving into is the uh, development of green technology, not only uh, locally but also internationally. And uh, that is why they have actually uh, organized the Langkawi International Smart City Green Forum 2015 where we are not only looking at um, the proliferation of the green technology per se, but also to create a sense of um, responsibility amongst uh, people, amongst uh, Malaysians as a whole. For the Langkawi Smart Green City Forum, Mm -hmm. it will be held this month, 17 to 18th of October. The whole event will be held in which part of Langkawi? In Pantai Chenang mm-hmm. at uh, Plangi Beach Resort. Can you share with us more information about the program and also the speakers? Okay, uh, it's a two-day event. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, it's from nine to five. Okay, so we have two sessions, which is a forum-like. That means it's like there's a moderator, and then the others are lectures. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there will be international speakers as well as local speakers. So the interesting international speakers are like um, Professor Jason Pomeroy. He's um, the award-winning Asia Green Architect. So oh, he's, that's amazing. Yeah, he has. He's young and he's uh, he's designed many uh, greenhouses, green buildings, and he's really into it. He also has his own green academy. Yeah, oh, he yes. does. Yes. Great. And we also have somebody from uh, the U- United Kingdom. His name is Michael Malkin. Okay, he he designs the smart city blueprint for for the UK. I see. So he'll be coming to share on his uh, design and experiences on how to create a blueprint uh, of a smart city. So there's a lot of really interesting people mm. with a lot of really, uh, I would say, diverse background on environmental yes. conservation yes. as well as green technology mm-hmm. and green architecture. Um, what is the main aim in this case? Is it focused more on environmental preservation or you focus on the green technology development? Oh, by the way, our theme is zero carbon, 100% technology driven. It's both. So um, It's both. Yeah. The best of both worlds, so to mm-hmm. speak. I mean... Most of them have this idea that in order for technology to grow, the uh, natural resources have to be depleted. Mm -hmm. But we are trying to uh, showcase that both can exist in harmony. So one should not um, trump the other in order for whether it's technology or whether you want to preserve the natural environment, one should not outdo the other. I think in Malaysia, when it comes to the word smart green city, it's something of a foreign word to us. Because when we think about city, usually we think about development. Lights, skyscrapers. skyscrapers, Less trees, but more cars and pollution. But perhaps a redefining of what city is all about is something that a lot of Malaysians, including myself, need to be Mm -hmm. aware of. So when it comes to smart green city, you mentioned earlier that it's a combination of not just about developing green technology but it's also uh, conserving the environment at the same time yes and beyond that what else that we can imagine when we talk about smart green city actually uh, it is already happening in pockets in Malaysia Mm -hmm. but it's just that um, people may not be aware of it Um, this idea has been very well accepted in Europe if you actually uh, have a look at it Uh, I know for a fact that in France they have actually passed a bill 
where all buildings have to have a certain element of green in them. So may it be uh, natural lighting for malls or office blocks or even the exterior of the office has to have a certain amount of plants being planted in order for them to uh, reduce carbon emission, mm -hmm. you know, for them to be able to make the environment more green. And this effort has been going on uh, very actively. As a matter of fact, I know in parts of Europe, um, there are actually countries where they pr uh, provide tax exemptions or uh, tax rebates for buildings or corporations which are eco-friendly, which mm -hmm. have this green technology going on. So we want to bring that into Malaysia. Like in Malaysia, if you were to see some of the, um, if you would notice as you walk around, there are actually malls and office buildings that now have plants being planted in their facade. Oh, yeah. PJ Trade Center. Maybe. Exactly, yeah. the PJ Trade Center. And then you have um, uh, even some of the buildings like the Shell Building in uh, Brickfields, mm -hmm. which uses more natural lighting instead of, you know, right. any other artificial lighting. Uh, you have buildings that were old that now have uh, these new um, vines that are being put out for these uh, plants to grow on, you know, to give a little bit of uh, of the cooling effect and also increase the uh, visual appeal of the building. Mm -hmm. You know, these are kind of uh, the kind of uh, efforts that are being taken to make cities green, and uh, we are just trying to drive it a little further. Which is you want to make it into a city that is being driven by the government, not just the private sector. Exactly. Right. Right. So why Langkawi? Actually, recently, if you notice, uh, about um, I think three weeks ago, our Prime Minister actually announced that uh, Langkawi will be the first low-carbon uh, island in Malaysia. So that means it's already in the blueprint. So it will be implemented via the uh, Green Technology Ministry. So everything will start from there because I think Langkawi is, uh, you know, if you want to start with KL, KL is too big. So maybe you can start with a smaller place so that it can be easily implemented. So when you speak of smart city, I think... You, the easiest way to the easiest beginning to a smart city is to actually provide Wi-Fi everywhere. Oh yeah. Okay, that, that's one of the. There yeah. will be a criteria yes. for every city. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and then, um, and then a lot of people actually go to Langkawi and they rent cars, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So definitely. I think soon they will, you will be, you will have to rent electric cars only. <laughs> There's no more. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I uh, remember when Thun M just recently came back from his visit from uh, Europe, mm. he uh, he went uh, representing Proton. Mm -hmm. He did mention that the following uh, creations of Proton is going to look at uh, producing cars that are... It's like hybrid cars, Not right? just hybrid cars, but mm -hmm. cars that are going to be uh, low in carbon emission. I see. So, so it'll be electric electric yeah. cars. Mm -hmm. So the future we all should mm. be looking at is at trying to use as much as possible renewable energy. Yeah, because yeah. people need to understand that uh, when you say smart city and green city, mm -hmm. smart city is to improve quality of life and mm -hmm. being green is a, a way of improving quality of life. So when we think about city, we don't necessarily think about Langkawi, right? Yes, true. they need to start somewhere. So we need to look for a smaller place. I mean, if we were to start in the Klang Valley, it's going to be too huge a project mm, yeah. to uh, kickstart. Of mm. course, um, granted that if it was the Klang Valley, the accessibility towards uh, this technology would, uh, would be significantly much easier. But Langkawi being a tourist destination yes. in Malaysia and also one of the favorite spots for uh, the local visitors as well, it may be easier to appeal to not only the local market but also the global market to get the word out there that, hey, by the way, Malaysia is getting into this kind of thing. Especially now with the upcoming COP21, mm. a yes. discussion on climate change as well as putting a cap on carbon emission, I think it's important to get the word out there that Langkawi is also heading towards that direction. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, we'll take one short break. When we return, we'll discuss further on the smart green city, also on Langkawi. The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia.
Hey, this is Arlene. You're back with me again at Durian ASEAN. Together with Tengku Faizwa, Tengku Razif, President of My Friend, as well as Ashwin, Organizer of the upcoming event, the Langkawi Smart City Forum 2015, which will be held between 17 to 18 October. So, further towards our discussion mm-hmm. on Langkawi. When I go to Langkawi, usually I won't think of it as a city. I will see it as a town. But, of course, that was like 10 years back, the last time I, mean, I visited <laughs> Langkawi. When we talk about Langkawi being the future of an island that will be having low carbon emissions, mm-hmm. uh, what kind of steps that the local mayor as well as the chief minister uh, would be uh, pledging on? Okay, actually this event is fully supported by the Kedah State Government. Uh, the chief minister will be will be going. About two weeks ago, the Alostar mayor, he actually made a press statement saying that Alostar is going to uh, move towards uh, becoming smart uh, green city probably mm-hmm. by the year 2030 or something like that. Mm-hmm. So they are uh, they are very well accepting this idea and then actually they have been visiting the other uh, smart green cities uh, in the other countries like uh, Korea, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, Jeju and Songdo, they are, they are one of the smartest green cities and actually our government also has gone there to sign some uh, MOU, you know, agreements to actually have some technology transfers and mm-hmm. things like that. So... Um, and this 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 two day event, okay, there will be all um, uh, DOs and then uh, mayors and top uh, government officials um, in the town planning department. They will mm-hmm. be there, and then there will be a lot of uh, green developers as well as other developers who are moving towards green, uh, as well as town planning professors and other GLC heads. Mm-hmm. So it's very um, well accepted, and then we hope to have more. Um, ideas, breakthroughs and more discussions about having everybody's own blueprint. So right now mm. it's on the stage of planning and discussion. C- correct. Among, among and awareness actually. Yes. Awareness. Yes. awareness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I mean, you should start with awareness before, mm. you know, you talk about like we want to do this and that. I mean, that is where I believe the civic mindedness uh, comes into play. What we are trying to do is we are trying to educate the people mm-hmm. and also um, develop uh, this sort of civic mindedness mm-hmm. where carbon emission or reducing carbon emission is actually each and everyone's responsibility, each individual's responsibility. Of course, having it in Langkawi is more on to developing the city, uh, Langkawi itself, to be more green and uh, we would not be able to see the civic mindedness grow leaps and bounds amongst the people just because of this but it will be something that will happen in the long run you know once we have established Langkawi mm-hmm. as a green city we would be able then to tell people by the way this is what a green city looks like mm-hmm. and when you are there you are supposed to adhere To the way you conduct yourself, mm-hmm. um, perhaps it's even the way you act towards this uh, green technology or how you are caring for the environment that you are associated in, in the green uh, technology environment. Mm-hmm. Now, that would later, from Langkawi, be brought back into the mainland. Mm-hmm. It is that kind of um, transference that we are looking at happening. Mm-hmm. It's a stage-by-stage process, which will definitely take time. Tell us more, what is upcycling? <laughs> you know how you recycle when you take unwanted things and you turn them into something else. So there's this new term called upcycling whereby that you add value to the recycled product. You see, like for example, if you take uh, unused boxes and you know somehow turn it into a pencil case or something like that, you may pr- perhaps you could add some artwork or a drawing, something to add value. Mm-hmm. And you know sometimes nowadays you go to shops and they have mm. like recycled items, but they make it into like it, it looks so pretty with with some artistic do something and all that, and they sell it even yeah. more expensive yes. than yes. something new. Okay, so we have uh, a bunch of youth. They have, uh, they've done many things. Well, uh, on our side, we also try to do a little bit of upcycling. So oh. we mm. actually took some uh, used buntings, buntings from our previous events, mm-hmm. 
and look into a shirt. <laughs> just get <laughs> it into a bag. They turn it into like a, a seminar bag. You know oh, how everybody so cool. get, gets a seminar bag. Mm-hmm. All we did was just cut it and then sew it together and put it's like a collage a way of doing yeah. those. Yeah. So everybody gets uh, a recycled seminar bag. So that's one of the uh, simplest ideas. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. this uh, upcycling initiative is great because nowadays a lot of people they like to cut trees they like to use Correct. you know all the resources and then reuse it again and then for the old things we just throw it in the garbage yes. and then it pile up and then you have like a mountains of rubbish mm. yeah. sitting there it's great that we can have the habit of recycling yes. or in this case upcycling, upcycling. <laughs> upcycling. so everything looks pretty actually when you upcycle everything looks pretty I mean, you tend to, like you said, the reason why it's called upcycling is because you're adding value to Mm -hmm. it. Something that um, is perhaps not being able to be used in the regular world, Mm -hmm. but we try to be a little bit more creative and make it a little bit more trendy. I think uh, those who come for the event might be able to walk away with uh, some of the upcycled materials and uh, even uh, some of the goodie bags may be actually made of this uh, upcycled uh, materials, items, yeah. materials that they can actually use. It's actually good for everybody because um, when you want to recycle or upcycle, it actually helps improve your creativity as well. Yes. Who are these youth that are involved? Okay, actually, they are they are the famous the famous ones and the not so famous ones. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean so by I that? I don't know whether you have heard um, this group called BGBG group. Okay, this BGBG is under Magic. <laughs> Mm. Uh, which is um, uh, funded by the government, but there are also a bunch of youth who actually successfully uh, do upcycling. They only do upcycling. They they have more than what I I told you just now. They, they yeah. are not just people who who has recycled bags and all that. They can even like, you know, they can they even have like a juice juicer that that they that they created yeah, from yes. yeah all from unwanted recycle. things. Oh yeah. Wow. But at the same time, there, there are also a lot of actually Kedahan youth mm-hmm. that are um, what you call underground underground recycling. You know, they have their own uh, small place, but they have... Uh, so you mean like grassroots yes, group are, of young Yeah, people. they are not... Uh, in short, they are not funded by anyone, so they are passionate about yeah, recycling. Yeah, so they do a lot of things. They have things like, you know, they have old jeans that turn into a bag... Oh, that's amazing! You know, like even the jeans pocket that they actually put for, uh, I holding don't know, their holding, letters, yeah, holding their letters, things like that. Yeah. So they have they do it on their own, but they are on a smaller. So how did you team. discover this group of people? <laughs> I met them actually a few years back. Oh, I see. Because um, uh, they they approached me because I was running a lot of courses on creativity mm-hmm. and all that. So they they wanted they wanted us to help them out. I see. Like in terms of probably get, get funding, you know, they want they wanted a place. Where they can have like a lot of sewing machines, like a warehouse, uh, a lot, yeah, mm. things that equipments that they can use in order to recycle and upcycle, so that everybody who's got ideas, they can just go there and use the equipment. Then they mm-hmm. come up with their product because not everybody can can go to the tailor and you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's, it, it costs money, mm-hmm. so uh, we need to encourage all these youth to start somewhere. So if let's say we provide a place. Which the which is FOC, <laughs> I think they can just go there and sew themselves or use any of the machines there to create their own upcycle product. So younger generation today, they are not that uh, I would say ignorant about the environment. They seem to be quite aware and mm. quite enthusiastic right. at doing something great towards the environment. They Actually, are. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I saw Ta College. They even mm. have like um, a competition on yes. um, recycled dresses. Oh. Yeah, so they have like fashion show made out of uh, yeah. recycle recycle items. I've seen that. Oh, that's amazing initiative. I think even the uh, schools these days are mm. promoting it quite a bit because I remember walking along some of the malls, uh, even the malls in Klang Valley, outside of the Klang mm. Valley, where when they uh, they actually promote the children in the schools to create things out of these materials that are non-usable. Mm. You know, so you have amazing um, figurines you have uh, items like what you said yeah. l- these kind of letter boxes or letter holders that are actually being created by things that you would not look at even recycling so there you go yeah. anyway we'll take another one short break when, when we return we'll discuss further on the smart green city in Langkawi the durian heat 
bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Alin. You are back with me again, and also with Tengku Faizwa and also Ashwin, uh, organizers for the upcoming Langkawi Smart and Green City yes. Forum 2015. So moving on, uh, I'm curious is. Langkawi following the footstep of Penang when it said that it wants to be a green island? Well, we can't quite say if we <laughs> are following the footsteps of Penang, but Penang certainly did moot it quite a while back. But the idea behind the Penang uh, green city concept is more onto the lines of conserving the um, natural elements that they already have. Uh, of course, when you compare Penang and Langkawi, Penang is significantly uh, more developed than what Langkawi is. So Penang's efforts are on the preliminary stages, looking at preserving what natural resources or the environment that they already have. Mm-hmm. You know, developing on what is already developed instead of uh, felling more forests or mountains to uh, enhance their development. But uh, Langkawi, on the other hand, is um, has a lot of room for new development. That's um, why a lot of the incorporation of green technology and also discussion on green technology mm-hmm. in the forum. Exactly. And mm-hmm. to develop in something that is not too developed, you know, like in Langkawi, would make things or efforts far easier. You know, we don't have to uh, demolish too much or we don't have to... Uh, redo the whole scene in order for green technology to make its entrance, we can incorporate it in stages without much damage. What are the green technology that people can expect from the discussion in the Langkawi Forum? Okay, um, there's this new uh, latest technology where people actually turn uh, waste to energy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, um, there, are, there are some bodies who have done a lot of homework on the amount of garbage that every city or state collects. And then from there, they, they actually have technology to turn it into energy. I see. And for such hot places like Putrajaya and all that, they even have now technologies like, you know, when, when you drive a car very fast and mm-hmm. then the heat from the tires, they can actually take that and turn into energy. So, that's how um, advanced the technologies in Malaysia are that the the technologies exist but yeah. it is up to the um, uh, government authorities and all that to uh, implement it. What about other kind of green technologies, especially technologies that are renewable like mm. wind technology, yes. solar? Uh, Malaysia I believe is taking uh, huge steps towards uh, renewable energy and we are looking into uh, creating more solar farms in Malaysia Mm. to harvest solar energy because um, solar energy is by far one of the most green uh, greenest uh, energies out there Um, and we do get a significantly good amount of uh, sunlight in Malaysia, especially when we are looking at the northern province. Yeah. Of course, along the um, Titiwangsa range, you know, it tends to vary because of the monsoon season and so forth. But the place where it's not affected much, places like Langkawi, uh, the Kedah, K- Kedah yeah. you know, places where the uh, there's more exposure, solar exposure. Those are the kind of places where we are looking at creating. Yeah. Uh, Solar farms. Mm-hmm. Actually, the chief minister of Kedah has started on all this. He actually, yeah. oh really? Uh, yes. Yeah, they, he actually signed some uh, MOUs with solar, some mm-hmm. providers and all that. And then, you know, but the thing with solar farm is they have to provide a huge space to build uh, the solar farm. But mm-hmm. they have started, so hopefully other states will follow through. Yeah. yeah, you know, and back in the day they used to say that uh, you can create solar farms, but again, there's a vast space that is going to be used and you can't do anything there. Mm-hmm. You know, you're only having these uh, boards that are going to be converting <laughs> solar to uh, energy, you know, things like that. But technology and um, innovation has advanced in such a way that what we uh, can do now is actually create structures where the panels, the solar panels, are fitted on the structure and beneath the structure you can have uh, a green, uh, uh, like a greenhouse. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You, you can have plants, maybe. You can, you go. Yeah, you can even have uh, maybe, uh, say, cattle farming. You can literally do so many things there. Uh, besides that, I mean, I still remember back in schools, so we always learned that when it comes to kerda, mm-hmm. it is the rice bowl of yes. Peninsula Malaysia. I'm not sure it's now is it still <laughs> is. But one of the key features of uh, kerda is the flatlands. Yes. Uh, that's why it's, uh, it's suitable for paddy farming. And Talking about flatlands... Does the government has any initiative to build a wind farm? I think yes. Okay, because um, I've heard some some discussions about it, but I think they are in they they are the government of Terengganu mm-hmm. is interested yeah. in wind farms, and they even have it already in uh, Perhentian Island. Oh, yes. they do. You can yes. actually go up there and take a look at the windmill. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's one of the first few projects that they did. Yeah. What are other things that people can expect in the forum that is also along the line of smart and green city? Okay, the forums will be led by the um, president of the Perbadana Putrajaya. As you know, Putrajaya is meant to be a smart city. When it was mm-hmm. first developed, it was meant to be a smart city. So, uh, Datuk Hasim, <laughs> the president, will speak of um, the, their uh, current progress and together with the Iskandar Malaysia CEO. So, Iskandar is also meant to be another smart smart green city so there will be ideas and um, probably discussions on you know on, on that topic and then there will be of course there's the other architect that I told you yes. about he will speak on how how to build a, a green building or what are green buildings for and w- what it is like and all that so he can guide you through that and he has a lot of experiences on that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the other guy that Michael Michael Murphy yeah. that I said he designs the blueprint for the smart city so that is like the bigger picture Mm-hmm. Of the uh, of the smart city and and at the same time we also have um, a UTM professor he will speak about uh, the lectures and all that and what and in learning learning about smart city so after this there there should be a follow through which we will organize so after the event there will be um, courses that they can attend overseas with certification that I'm going to uh, promote so they will they they will have like a week course in Venice. Mm. And also learn about wow. the architecture over there. I and think I want to join now. Yes. <laughs> so it'll be it'll be very interesting. And then um, hopefully when when they come back here, they will be able to uh, implement it. Mm-hmm. As the organizer, what mm-hmm. are your future plans after this event? Well, we are definitely going to have uh, follow up events, uh, whether it's in terms of forums or exhibitions. We are going to see to the uh, needs of uh, the time we are going to organize it but definitely we will be looking at uh, bringing it uh, closer to the Klang Valley for more accessibility for people because our next step is towards enhancing Mm. awareness so perhaps we are definitely looking at uh, exhibitions that are going to take place in the near future where some of the materials the upcycling um, items will be showcased and perhaps even have um, workshops for the general public to participate or uh, in these upcycling events where the upcycling, the idea, can be brought back to each and everyone's home. Uh, we are definitely going to be uh, looking at a more strategic uh, type of forum where we'll be having the greater Klang Valley involved mm, yeah. into making uh, the Klang Valley itself become more green by parts you know uh, many of them are not aware but you know recently if you were to have looked at the KL Tower you would have noticed that they change their lights oh really yes, yes. Uh, no I'm not aware of it <laughs> uh, people are like wow it looks more beautiful now eh? things like that but you see the lights are now LED lights and um, why they use LED lights is simply because it consumes lesser energy it produces lesser heat and it is more visually appealing. So now you see the vibrance of the tower, just amazing. You know, so the next time you drive out in KL, you can actually have a look at how the KL tower looks like and uh, see it for yourself. So green technology can make things significantly better. You know? Definitely. Mm-hmm. Because in Europe, you, uh, you actually see this becoming a corporate culture yeah. where when uh, one of these corporations were to, say, give a tender or they are giving their annual report or some sort of 
uh, material from them that is going out of the corporation, they actually have a portion which uh, which spells out how green they are. They actually have an index, a green index, which shows how much on the carbon scale they are in, you know, which shows uh, what is their level, how green they are. And it is very, very uh, widely welcomed by the people. Back to Langkawi yes. <laughs> before we end the show. <laughs> I would like you to share with us again about the forum and how people can actually participate in it. So the event is on the 17th to 18th of October. There will also be a gala dinner on the 17th of October. Participants who come for the forum will be able to attend the dinner as well. And if you wish to participate, you can log on to smartgreencity2015.wordpress.com and uh, register online. And we also have free seats to give away. With that, thank you very much. Thank You're you. welcome.